So welcome to the class tonight. My name is Sheila Tucker. I am the Florida Oils RN. I'm super excited that you're here with me this evening. I have a lot to share with you about arming yourself against cancer. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is how to get in touch with me. If you need to get in touch with me, you can reach me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and by Gmail. Okay, and that is my cell phone number. Feel free to text me anytime and uh, I'll get back with you as soon as I possibly can. I'm, I'm just uh, need to go through a few disclosures first. I do uh, have a financial interest in doTERRA. It is my, um, I work with them. I'm an international educator with the company and I just wanna tell you that the things that we're gonna talk about tonight uh, doTERRA has asked me to disclose that they do not prevent, treat, or cure diseases. Your lifestyle choices can help prevent disease. Your doctor treats your symptoms and fixes your broken parts, and your body actually cures disease itself. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if your microphone is unmuted, if you could please check your microphone and make sure that you are muted, that would be very helpful. So the contents of this presentation are made available through a collaboration such as text, graphics, images, and other material contained throughout the presentation. We're gonna call it content and are for informational purposes only and do not constitute medical advice. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions that you may have regarding medical conditions. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that I may have said or implied in this content. This presentation is, does not recommend or endorse any specific tests, physicians, products, procedures, opinions, or other information that may be mentioned. Reliance on any information provided by this information informational presentation is solely at your own risk and this class and content are provided on an as-is basis. So let's get to the class and the content, shall we? So who am I? I am Sheila Tucker. I'm a Christian. I'm a wife. I'm a homeschooling mom. I'm a grandmother. I'm a nurse and I'm a wellness advocate. I advocate for other people's wellness. I am also an adventurist and a patient and I am a survivor. So briefly, let's go through what is cancer. Cancer just refers to a group of related diseases where some of the body cells become abnormal. They begin to unnecessarily divide and unceasingly divide, and eventually they enter into the surrounding tissues. This can start almost anywhere within your body. The abnormal cells that would have otherwise died off survive, multiply, and initiate the growth of tumors. So what is a tumor? Tumors are just uh, known as maybe neoplasms or neoplastic. They're swollen masses of tissue that have been a result of uncontrollable cell division. Malignant tumors, also known as cancerous tumors, are classified by the type of cancer present as well as their state of development. Depending on the type of cancer, they can be either solid or fluid filled. So how do cells become cancerous? In order for a normal cell to become cancerous, many changes must occur. These factors include the cell cycle is not regulated and the cells continue to divide. They're uninhibited as long as nutrients are available, that cancer cell or cells or group of cells will survive. They have a failure to halt their growth and die like a normal cell will halt its normal growth once it reaches its borders, okay? They completely disregard normal bodily signals that are sent to stop the growth from other cells of the body. The normal adhesion properties of these kinds of cells are lost. Mutations occur in the DNA, which is deep in the nucleus of the cell, that control the production of proteins that regulate this normal cell cycle. So what causes these mutations that would allow a cell to become cancerous and divide unceasingly or to become a tumor? 
Well, genetic mutations can occur for many different reasons, including inherited genetic mutations. Some genetic mutations are passed down hereditarily. However, this accounts for just a small percentage of cancers. Environmentally provoked gene mutations. Some of these causes of, for gene mutations include carcinogens, viruses, hormones, obesity, inactivity, and chronic inflammation. Surprisingly, mutations occur quite regularly. I don't know if you realize this, but every seventh cell that you make in your body is a cancer cell. It's just that your body recognizes it and engulfs it and your immune system destroys it and takes it out of your body. So these mutations are occurring regularly throughout normal cell growth. The cells, however, have the ability to recognize, identify, and repair these mistakes. Unfortunately, cancer can occur when those mistakes go unrecognized. So while these uh, common risk factors, um, you know, don't need to be present in order for cancer to develop. These are some of the factors known to increase the risk of cancer. Of course, age. Overall, as we age, our cancer risk increases, okay? Your body just gets tired. Your immune system gets tired. Your lymphatic system gets tired, okay? Lifestyle choices, habits such as smoking, drinking, poor diet, excessive sun exposure, remaining overweight, unsafe sex, inactivity, all play a role in cancer risk as well as your family history. While the hereditary gene mutations are not common, it is still worth being aware of your family's health history because it can be very relevant to your own cancer risk. And of course, your environment. These include exposures to secondhand smoke, harmful chemicals, and other environmental toxins. So, you know, may not know this, and, and believe it or not, cancer is preventable. The American Institute for Cancer Research even shows you breast cancer. 38% of breast cancer is pre preventable. 69% of esophageal cancer is preventable. Prostate cancer, 11% of prostate cancers is preventable, y'all. Colorectal cancer, 50% of colorectal cancers are preventable. Y'all, we can do something about this. According to the study that was conducted in 2008 at MD Anderson Cancer Research Center, 90 to 95% of all cancer cases are due to lifestyle and environmental factors. Evidence concluded that cancer-related deaths were due to the following factors. 25 to 30% were due to tobacco. 30 to 35% were due to diet, 10 to 20% due to infections, and the remaining percentage of cancer is due to stress, lack of physical activity, environmental pollution, and radiation exposure. You guys, we have to know that staying lean, eating smart, moving more, and being proactive and living your life intentionally will reduce your risk for cancer. This is huge. We need to be shouting this from the rooftops. Many people don't realize that. They believe that cancer just happens to them or that it was passed down from family member to family member. Y'all, only 2% of cancers are even hereditarily um, associated. That means the rest of them are environmentally associated. That's terrifying. So I was diagnosed with a super rare condition. It's called stiff man syndrome. It's a one in a million diagnosis. There's not much research out there about how to treat it. It acts like MS and Parkinson's. Um, those are kind of like my symptoms act like MS and Parkinson's. I grow cancer antibodies. They're called anti-GAD65 antibodies. They're very rare pair perineoplastic antibodies that circulate through my bloodstream all the time. It's also um, in my spinal fluid and in other fluids and tissues of my body. 
Um, the symptoms include chronic pain, spasms that are brought on by emotional distress, sudden movements or loud noises. I oftentimes have difficulty walking, breathing. I have vertigo and uh, sphincter issues. And according to what I've been told, it's progressive. That was back in uh, 2013. I was diagnosed with that. Okay. And at the time I was diagnosed um, in late 2013, I could not walk. I was in the bed about 16 hours a day. I could not um, use the restroom. I was using the restroom on myself. It was terrible. My daughter and my husband were caring for me. And um, this is the treatment that they recommended after the other treatments had failed. The treatment that they recommended was very drastic. It's called plasma exchange. And the goal for this plasma exchange is to take the antineoplastic antibodies out of the bloodstream. Okay. However, you can't take them out of all of your tissues, okay? So what they what they indicated was that it's kind of an experiment and, and it may or it may not work. Well, the experimental things that they had tried on me before had not worked. One of the medicines that they had given me when I was sitting in the infusion center four days a week gave me meningitis. Yeah, that's a good time right there. Let me tell you, you want to have a rip roaring headache and a super bad fever and start hallucinating and just have all kind of crazy stuff happen. Uh, get yourself a good case of meningitis. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so they put me in the hospital and they did this procedure to try to get all of the antibodies and all of the toxicity out of my blood and my plasma. And um, so when this treatment failed, they left the catheter in my heart, which you can see on the left-hand side, and started talking about um, experimental chemotherapy. And yeah, that was terrifying. So um, I'm going to show you real quick that obviously I'm doing great. Okay, this is me at um, Mount Rainier just a few just a few days ago, actually. And uh, my husband and I hiked all the way to a beautiful waterfall on the side of Mount Rainier in Washington State. It was gorgeous. So real quick, let me see if I can get this video up for you. I was a nurse in the hospital for more than 20 years and I only knew Western medicine and when I got sick that was the very first thing that I turned to and it wasn't until I was very very sick I had already had a catheter placed into my heart when the doctor told me that that had failed and I needed to start on chemotherapy and I thought I'm gonna die I reached out to other people and William Page embarrassed and spoiled. She said, well, you can hurt. You can always take chemotherapy. You know, why don't you try it? So I tried it. And every day I got a little bit better. Finally, when I was able to walk again, I called the doctor and I said, I want this poured out of my chest. And I said, I don't need it. I'm healed. I trust doTERRA. Pretty cool, right, y'all? So um, a friend that um, had had a, an issue with his body came over and um, did that video for me because he experienced the beauty of doTERRA essential oils also. He was having a very serious sickness and whenever I used the oils on his spine, and the symphony of the cells and with aroma touch within 48 hours he was completely healed and back to normal and i try not to say healed very much but i because i believe that the author of all healing is christ and i believe that god saw me suffering and he saw me in pain and he saw my misery and he had compassion on me and he had grace and he delivered what I needed to be well and to stay well and to stay healthy. And as a nurse, I have a ethical obligation to share that with the world. 
without the knowledge of what it is that I'm sharing with you tonight, I believe that that would be medically negligent of me. So um, I'm not the only one. Okay, so this girl right here, Allison Hooch, uh, she is a diamond in doTERRA, and I'm going to let you listen to her story now because her story is just as powerful. Allison Hooch was diagnosed with brain cancer at the tender age of 13. She used frankincense oil to treat it. Here's her amazing story. I walked out of the waiting room about an hour later to see my mom, who had just hung up the phone um, with tears in her eyes. And she told me, she said, Allison, you have a brainstem tumor. Um, and I didn't know quite what that meant. You know, I was 13 years old. I just started junior high school a couple weeks prior. Um, but I knew at that moment that my life would be different from there on out. Um, so we immediately went to go see my doctor, to my pediatric neurologist. Um, and he showed my parents what the tumor was. Um, basically, it was a brainstem tumor, pilocytic astrocytoma is what it was, um, about the size of an egg, and it rested on my brainstem. So that next day, I was scheduled for emergency surgery, and um, they were able to get rid of about half my tumor. It was very interesting. Um, my doctor told me, eat all the calories you can. If you'll eat pizza, if you'll eat ice cream, because I was very skinny, he's like, just get calories in me, whatever you'll take. But in our research, we learned how nutrition was so important. I needed to give my body good calories to help support good, healthy weight gain, support the cell so I would function better. And then we started doing research on what to do. And of course, many people were pushing us to go see our radiologist and go that direction. Um, my mom and I, we did go meet with our radiologist. And I still, to this day, remember sitting in that room. Um, the feelings that I felt in there. I, it, it was very cold. It was very cold. It was not what I wanted to do. And I actually left that appointment and I grabbed my mom's hand and I told my mom, mom, this isn't this process for me. And so she said she had also felt the same way. But we left that radiologist appointment knowing we need something else. Um, and that's where we were really drawn towards essential oils. Um, they kept coming across in a lot of our research. We noticed how essential oils did incredible things. There's medical studies out there showing what essential oils can do. Um, and in particular, with essential oils, we were really drawn towards frankincense essential oil. Um, I love frankincense oil. It's a very powerful oil. I think there's a reason why it's called liquid gold or why it's one of the oils that the Christ child was given. It's a very, very precious oil. Um, so I use a lot of oils. I use a lot of frankincense oil. I also use clove oil. How did you take it? Did you ingest it or did you rub it on your skin? Yeah. Or did you do the aromatherapy? How did you do that? You know, it was really interesting how we did it. So I did do it back here where my scar is. Um, but I don't know how effective that was because you do have a very thick skull. But one way that I did, and this was probably the way that was most consistent, is, is I always put a drop of frankincense oil on my tongue and raise the tongue to the roof of my mouth. And I did that probably about every two hours because I figured, hey, that's probably the closest way I get to my brain stem without interfering with bones or things like that. And a lot of blood vessels there too. too. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of blood vessels, so just a lot of internal. What happened was actually, actually quite incredible. So um, I started to gain health pretty quickly. Um, like I said, I started junior high school and then I was diagnosed three weeks later. Um, so I came home and started to regain health after my surgery. Um, I was able to start school again with my peers the next semester. Um, and that, that was pretty incredible. That's quick for a brain tumor. You know what? It was interesting. I was only in the hospital for about a week and a half. Most people are in there for about six weeks. But once I had my tumor, we started on good nutrition. We started on oils. And I just had an amazing recovery. And that took about three years. Okay. took about three years I would go see him. Um, but every time I'd go see him, it just slowly was improving. It wasn't dramatic overnight. It, it was a slow, gradual process, but it took about three years. Um, and I remember the point where I went to go see my neurologist, and he told me, you have no more tumor. Really? It's completely disintegrated. Wow. What, what, what did you feel like at that point? You know what? Words can't describe. It was just like such an emotional relief. 
um, you know, I had been praying and I wanted my tumor to go away. And I was like, you know, I need another chance of life. And so when those words were said, it was invigorating. It was like I had a new life again. You know, I, w I wanted to go to college. I wanted to become a registered dietitian. I wanted to tell people my story. And when I was told those words, it was like, this happened. Um, and that was at the age of 16 then? That was about, yeah, the age of 16, okay. 17 is when that, that happened. So um, ever since then, my health has just been improving. So this is, you know, we have a lot of information available to us now. And sometimes I think that it's almost like information overload. But y'all, we are, I'm not the only one. There's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of testimonies like this, where people use nutrition, where people use supplements, where people use plant therapies, where people use frankincense and oils to help support their body through the process of being healthy and being well. And you know, like her doctor said, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. You are complete. It's completely gone. She didn't do the radiation. She didn't do the chemo, all of those things, right? Well, my doctor called me a couple of years ago. He's an autoimmune neuroimmunologist at John Hopkins, a super special specialist who sees and follows about 150 patients with my condition from around the world. And he said to me, he said, Sheila, I cannot believe that you are hiking up, you know, a mountain. And at the time it was a different mountain. I think it was Mount Washington. And I said, yeah, I'm hiking up Mount Washington right now. I had a little destiny on my back and I was carrying her up there to see one of the last remaining glaciers uh, in our country. And it was like, he said, I just can't believe it. He said, you're the only one. You're the only one that's walking for improving, doing great, not needing medications, don't need a bunch of treatments, you know, I feel honored, you know, and if it's good enough for Hugh Jackman, the Wolverine, right? Okay, it's good enough for me. <laughs> it's everything you'll ever want. It's everything you'll ever need. And it's right there in front of you, y'all. It's right where you want to be. <laughs> it's doTERRA. And I know all y'all are laughing about that right now. <laughs> If you haven't seen The Greatest Showman, it is awesome. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. So, um, and again, I, I, I'm not the only one. Uh, Lisa King is a blue diamond in doTERRA. And yeah, this is a text mess, a, a Facebook messenger message from her. Yes, I really did it. And I did it naturally. Thank you, Jesus. You know, she kicked cancer's butt. She had stage four terminal cancer with a 2% chance to live. Okay, y'all, this stuff is legitimate. It's real. So what's your why? Why are you doing this? Why are you sharing? Why aren't you sharing? Right? So one of the turning points for me, uh, of course, was my own testimony. But having lived in a medical mindset for so many years, I was like, well, is this just for me or is this for a bunch of other people? I didn't know anybody else that had had such a radical transformation. It wasn't until Luann came to me and she said, Sheila, there's a little girl in the hospital at Sacred Heart that's very, very sick and her family believes that she might die. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, well, tell me what's going on with her. Explain to me what's happening to her. <sighs> she uh, was three years old. Her name was Michelle. She's uh, the, the, the bigger one on the left-hand side. And um, she had gotten a sore throat and she didn't want to eat or drink. And she got a fever. So she wasn't getting better and her parents took her to the emergency department and it was at the emergency department that they did some blood work and said, oh my goodness, you know, your daughter has leukemia and we need to start chemotherapy immediately. So they admitted her to into the hospital 
and she began having um, chemotherapy immediately. Now, if you know anything about medications, you know that some people respond really well to certain medications and other people, you know, like I could take, let's say something over the counter and I could get relief of a headache. And then I recommend that to you and you took it and you might have an anaphylactic reaction and die from that medication, even though it was over the counter. Well, little Michelle had a reaction to the chemotherapy and her body and her organs shut down. Um, and they told the family that that was a side effect of the chemotherapy. And as a nurse, I've seen that a lot. I've seen those side effects happen a lot, not just with chemo, but with lots of other medications. And um, so by the time Luann and I made it up there to the hospital, Michelle was on end of life treatments and it was devastating. We both prayed and we asked God what to do to help this little girl because she was laying in the bed and she was literally just being tortured and her eyes opened when she looked at me and when her eyes opened and her face was all swollen, tears just fell down the sides of her face and it just broke me. It just broke me. She, she was so critically ill that she had multiple nurses and doctors at her bedside 24 hours a day. And one of the doctors came in and was wanting to know what it was that I was talking about with regards to frankincense. And I said, Hey, listen, you know, we just brought some frankincense up here and we wanted to, you know, put it on her body somewhere to try to help her body get better or to restore her body or to, you know, help in some way, maybe some frankincense and arborvitae. And the doctor, I could see the fear in his eyes. I've, I've worked with doctors lots of times, you know, obviously close, very close at, at the patient's bedside when a patient is dying and we've exhausted all resources for that patient's life. And I could see that fear in his eyes and it was um, scary for him. And he said, well, let me take these essential oils and this information and I'm going to go over to the computer. I'm going to look it up. So he did that. He, he took it away and I was talking to the nurses in the room and Luann was talking to the family and um, the doctor came basically running back in with a handful of paperwork and said, oh my gosh, this stuff is being studied for all kinds of cancer and fungus and, you know, all of the things that she was having going on, organ failure and like, you know, lung tissue destruction and all these things. And um, he was like, well, what, how do we use it? What do we do? And I said, well, we were going to just, you know, apply it to the bottom of her feet. And that's when he pulled back the covers um, on this very bloated, swollen, dying child. And I saw that part of the chemical reaction from the chemo was that her skin had melted off of her feet and legs. And he said, I don't think that's going to be an option. And I just looked and it just, it broke my heart. I couldn't imagine the pain that she must be in. I couldn't even imagine it. And I, he said, well, can we put it anywhere else? And I said, sure we can. Why don't we put it right here on her abdomen? And it was very swollen, very tight and very bloated. And uh, I said, okay. And I explained to Michelle what we were going to do. I told her it would not hurt her and that she was going to uh, start to feel better. By the time we, and I told her parents what, what to do. I said, I want you to use this three to five times a day. One drop right here over her belly button. Of, of frankincense and arborvitae three to five times a day. Every time you think about it, use it. So they started using that. And before I could make it to the parking lot, her father called and said, oh my gosh, her numbers look so much better that we are going, they're, they're changing her from one machine to another one. It's a lesser machine. And I said, oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. By that weekend, which was 48 hours later, by that weekend, she was sitting up in the bed and playing with her father's cell phone. And 
she was off of dialysis and she was responding appropriately. It was a miracle, an absolute miracle. And by that Monday, the oncology doctor came in to the room and said, oh, yay, excellent, great. She's doing so much better. She's eligible for another round of chemotherapy. And 24 hours later, she passed away. I wished I could have been there. I wished I could have done more. I wish I could have gone sooner. That's my why. Because so many people don't know. They don't know what you're learning right now. They don't understand the magnitude of what it is that you have in your hands. And they just, they don't know. And if you don't teach them, they'll never know. It was a devastating experience for Luann and I to be where this little child had died. And we both made a promise to each other that we would never give up ever. Because something about success has something to do with action, right? Successful people keep moving. We're going to make mistakes, y'all. We may not pick the right oil. We may not tell them the right thing. We may show up late, but we're not going to quit. We got to keep going because people are going to die if we don't. It's, it was an opportunity for me to learn about grief. It was an opportunity for me to learn about how to grieve and this anger that was overwhelming me for the loss of this child and the medical community that I felt such pride in had damaged her irreparably, but it's not their fault. Y'all, what I'm trying to tell you is they literally don't know. They really don't. They don't know. So I learned about grief. I learned that there are multiple doctors that are using doTERRA oils to help support people that are going through grief and shock and, um, you know, blends for emotional support and um, how to get things done and grief release. And, you know, maybe there is such a thing as good grief, right? And I thank God that I started to learn about it because it was at that point where destiny came to us and she was very, very sick. She was five and a half years old when we got her and she was very sick with cystic fibrosis, which is a genetically inherited condition. No, it's not cancer. Okay. But we knew how desperately ill she was. And so we took a trip, went to the Grand Canyon, went to Las Vegas. We went to Disney World. We went all over the country to help just provide some great memories for us and for this precious little girl, both little girls that we have. And ultimately, Destiny um, got to go to heaven and got to graduate after three years of awesome care and she got to learn all about essential oils and how to comfort herself while she was grieving and um, learned how to grieve learned how to release learn how to, you know there's this there's these stages that you go through with grief you know and if it's possible that cancer is a result of stored emotional trauma then we need to help people learn how to grieve properly. And I put these all over this page because honestly, y'all, that's what it feels like. It feels like sometimes I've accepted everything and then I go back into the anger phase. And then I'm like in denial. I can't even believe she's gone. And then I get locked in this old cycle of sadness. And then I'm sad and then I'm grieving and then I'm in, you know, denial again. And it's just like, ah. Uh, Get this off of me. Get this out of me. And it is a process and it does take time. So to those of you that know, this is real. And 
when you have somebody that has a chronic autoimmune condition or some kind of chronic condition like cancer or some kind of chronic condition that causes their immune system to be overly taxed, help them. If they're angry, blend equal parts of serenity and Roman chamomile in a rollerball and help them. If they need to accept what's happened, blend equal parts of coriander, frankincense, and wild orange in a rollerball. Fill it up with some fractionated coconut oil and help them. You know, if they are in that bargaining stage, you know, and I don't know about y'all, but I do this sometimes, Lord, if you'll just do this, I'll do that, you know. Get some ginger and peppermint oil and put that on your wrists and smell that throughout your day. You know, those kinds of things that people are going to go through throughout the day and those emotional rollerballs that we have that are already pre-made are phenomenal. I use console over my heart all the time, y'all, all the time. Another thing that was super powerful is you got to get moving, okay? So all of these stories and all, there's just tons of mounting evidence for the truth about cancer that keeps us moving forward. So a growing body of research has supported the importance of physical activity in cancer prevention, some of the benefits of exercise for specifically reducing the risk of cancer include regulating your blood levels of hormones, reducing exposure to dietary carcin carcinogens by accelerating your metabolism, and prevention of body fat accumulation. It's recommended to adopt at least 30 minutes of exercise for at least three days a week, y'all, or most days out of the week, okay? This can be done in increments or all at once, and the most important advice I can give you is just do it. Just do it, okay? Just figure out what is you and do it. If it's walking, if it's stair climbing, if it is push-ups, if it is sit-ups, grab a jump rope, whatever it is, do it. Swimming is awesome. I love swimming. So we've got this fantastic ocean that's just out my back porch and I love it. I swim in it. I put my um, snorkel and mask on and I just swim right through the rip current. And, and I just get moving, okay? So just do it, right? Because life is about choices. This is Tim and I in um, San Joaquin Valley in California. It was 102 degrees, right? And we were outside moving and swimming and uh, doing our thing. And yes, I was an absolute hot mess and I needed my hot mess rollerball. <laughs> Um, with a little clary sage balance, serenity, peace, console, and fractionated coconut oil because um, at this particular stage of my life, I seem to find that I am hot a lot, okay? And so if you know people that have these random hot things, flashes, whatever you want to call them, it's like this internal heat that just manifests, make them a hot mess rollerball. Okay, the next day we were at Mount Rainier where it was 29 degrees and we had climbed all the way to 6,100 feet. Yeah, we did a lot of that with the car. Okay, but <laughs> it, was, uh, it was still awesome and we got out and we walked a lot and it was super, super fun. And believe it or not, one of the things that I took with me up that mountain was my kid collection roller balls. I love these things. Y'all, if you don't have this, you've got to get it. The thinker, um, as you go from sea level to uh, 6,000 and elevation, my thinker felt like it was broken. So grabbed out my thinker roller ball and rollered it straight on my scalp. My uh, stronger roller ball, I put that on the back of my knees and around my ankles for immune support when you're around a bunch of people at National Park and stuff like that. The rescuer blend is for bumps and bruises and I just like it. I like the way it smells. But my very, very, very favorite one is Brave. I put the Brave around my heart and uh, around my throat area and it just smells fantastic. It makes me feel good. And I just would break out my roller balls whenever I felt like it. And I would use them along every hike, along the drive, along the, um, you know, talking with other people. And it just made me feel good. So uh, the other thing that I made sure that we do, and, and this is super valuable, there's tons of research about the value of good 
quality sleep. It's essential for your proper immune function. When you're sleeping, your body is healing. It's regenerating your nervous tissue for healthy mental health, okay? So ensuring that you schedule in, and I'm covetous of this. I'm covetous of seven to eight hours of good sound sleep every night to reduce your risk of cancer. So you're told your whole life how important your sleep is for health, but now there's science to prove it. See, studies have been addressing the relationship with insufficient sleep habits with some of the top cancers in the United States, yet still one out of every 10 people experience sleep disturbances. The most shocking part of this all is that some of these sleep issues can actually be avoided. Some strategies to improve your sleep include creating a sleep schedule and sticking to it. Limit your screen time before bed. Reduce your caffeine and sugar intake. Do you realize that it takes 12 hours from your last cup of coffee for that caffeine to be out of your system? Now, I do know people that drink coffee to help them go to sleep. That's called an idiopathic response, just like some people can have an opposite reaction to a medication. Well, they can have an opposite reaction to caffeine. It can actually make them tired, okay? So adopt a nighttime ritual, okay? Try using essential oils, drinking herbal teas, leisurely read before bed, and supplement with like melatonin, magnesium, serenity soft gels, all of those good, healthy enzymes that uh, we use. So one of my very favorite recipes for a magical night's sleep is the magnolia rollerball to my ankles. 30 minutes before bed in an empty vegetarian capsule, put one to two drops of yarrow, okay, the yarrow palm, it's blue, it's brand new, one drop of turmeric, one drop of pink pepper, and if you want to, you can throw in some patchouli or vetiver or myrrh or any of those very thick oils with the supplemental facts box on it because those are extremely relaxing to your neurological tissues. I also take one Copaiba soft gel 30 minutes before bed. Y'all, you will get a great night's sleep with this combo pack. So the other thing that we need to discuss quickly is how to manage your stress. You know, the prevention of cancer is truly a holistic process. While it's incredibly important to eat nutritious foods and drop unhealthy habits, adopt an exercise routine, get adequate sleep, none of this is going to be effective if you don't manage your stress properly. Stress is the primary driver for chronic inflammation and, in turn, disease. So some of the ways to relieve stress may include meditation, yoga, gardening, taking a walk, spending time with love, you know what, coloring, y'all, in a coloring book, deep breathing, diffusing, slow down, reach out to somebody that you enjoy talking to or listening to, tune into your body, and literally make it a point every day to laugh out loud. There are certain neurochemicals that are, re that are released into your bloodstream when you laugh out loud. There's also chemicals that are released in your bloodstream when you sing, when you move your body, when you write, and when you speak thankfulness, you explode the universe with positivity so that you can actually feel the stress being lifted off of your body. Some calming blends to diffuse, ocean waves, a little lavender, lime, and spearmint. How about some calm and uplift with some coriander, peppermint, and balance? Today, I was diffusing coriander and tangerine because I had a problem with the air conditioner, so I had to have the air conditioner guy come today. <clears throat> And I needed to be calm because I was like praying, Lord, please don't let my air conditioner be broke. <laughs> but he was able to get it up and running because even in October, it's hot here in Florida. It's 
hot and humid, okay? So capture these wonderful diffuser blend recipes. There's a ton of additional resources. If you really want to know more about cancer and the resources that you have at your fingertips, screenshot this or um, capture this screen so that you can go back and look at all of these resources. There's tons of them. So how do you know what essential oils to use? Get the Essential Life book. Get a Modern Essentials book. Get the Drop Lee app. If you don't have the Drop Lee app, I have one for you for free. Text me. I'll send it to you. Get on our Facebook groups. Go to aromatools.com. We have tons and tons and tons of resources at your fingertips right now. I'm going to uh, stop the share here shortly, and I'll show you one of my favorite ones. My daily habits are super simple. I take my vitamins, my whole food vitamins, so that I have all the minerals and vitamins that my body needs to assimilate proper healthy bodily functions. I use my omega-3 fatty acids with nine essential oils. I use my alpha CRS with powerful antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, and cellular energy producers. I put balance on the bottom of my feet. Sometimes I put it around my heart. Sometimes I put it on my kids. No, I do that all the time. <laughs> use frankincense under my tongue, on the back of my neck. Use lemon in my water, on guard in my water, wild orange in my water. Love it. Serenity for calming and sleeping. Terrazyme for digestive support. Big one right there. On guard toothpaste, DDR Prime. Y'all, these are the daily health habits to help a person get better and stay better and to be like the foundation of their nutritional options. Use common sense when you use an essential oil. So remember safety first. No oils in the eyes, ears, nose, or sensitive areas unless they are diluted with fractionated coconut oil and not water. Do not use an essential oil on sensitive areas unless it's diluted, okay? Use oils frequently for acute problems, like every 15 minutes. Use two to three drops of oil three to five times a day for chronic issues. Babies and elderly always need carrier oil with every application. And y'all, use your book, okay? Use it, please. How do you order? Talk to the person that invited you to this class. You have three purchase options. You can purchase retail, 25% off as a wholesale customer, or you can choose a kit, or you can customize a kit to suit your own needs. Again, talk to the person that invited you to this class if you are brand new. The most popular kit is the Natural Solutions Kit. It saves you money. You waive that $35 fee. And when you order the following month, you're going to get $100 in free oil products. Okay, that's huge, y'all. That's huge. And includes your whole year membership uh, for free in that also. So right now, doTERRA is running a special. When you buy this kit, the Dream Kit, which includes that awesome kids rollerball stuff that I was telling you about earlier, you're going to get all of these items for free. And unfortunately, we're after October 15th, so you don't get the free lemon with your loyalty rewards. But this graphic was awesome, so I used it in my presentation. <laughs> so it's giveaway time. Anybody ready to know what the giveaway is? Okay, here we go. DDR Prime supports healthy cellular response, repairs and regenerates tissues, reduces oxidative stress uh, to the DNA, and supports healthy cellular apoptosis and renewal of proper cellular health, okay? You can use DDR Prime for ADHD, anti-aging, cancer, thyroid issues, um, tissue repair, inflammation, cell health, autoimmune disorders, multiple sclerosis, neurological issues. If you want to have the essential oil in a pre-made gel cap, you can do that with the bottle on the top. If you want the oil all to yourself because you're going to make your own capsules or because you have areas that you want to target specifically, then it also comes in a bottle of oil too. So if you're the winner, you just need to let me know which one you want, the pre-made gel caps or the oil. So Thank you so much for taking your time with me to experience this series. I'm super passionate about sharing this topic with people who are eager to ensure um, that they maintain optimal health. So please, if you have any further questions, reach out to me because I am here to support you. So I am going to show you something really quickly before we end this because I want y'all to know the tools that you have at your, at your fingertips. So all I did was Google 
DDR Prime video. And um, in another country, it's called Novo Prime, but I will post this video for you, okay? After the class, I'll post it in the Facebook group for you because it's super valuable. Dr. David Hill is our chief medical advisor for doTERRA, and he's talking about the DDR Prime in this uh, video and teaching about it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you really quickly was that we have an FAQ page, all right? This is the FAQ page whenever you uh, want to know more about oils or you want to introduce somebody to oils, type in the search bar FAQ Rendezvous Add and Tag or just type in Add and Tag. And if you are not already added to this group and you are a member of our team, please let me know. We have tons of valuable information in here about what I have oils, what do I do, how do I do this? And then the, we, we have a, a whole process where you can learn more. So then you would click the next unit and the next unit and the next unit so that you can learn more about essential oils. And here's one of the top things that is in that unit that you're, you're learning about how to use your top 13 oils. You know, what do we do? Rollerball blends, diffuser combos, spray bottle blends, safety, dilution, dilution usage guides, all of that stuff is in here. So y'all, there's tons of information uh, at your fingertips. One more thing before I go, if you, um, before I pick the winner here, hang on, this is doTERRA.com. You can go here, anybody can go here. You do not have to log in to access this information. Go to advocates right here under education. Look, you can do doTERRA University for free. You can discover solutions for free. You can do empowered success for free. There are so many videos in here and so much information. I cannot regurgitate it all to you tonight. There's literature, class kits, eBooks, free eBooks, forms, flyers, images, presentations, videos. Y'all, please get in here under advocates and explore all of this beautiful information that you have at your fingertips. So with that, I just want to say thanks again for spending your time with me tonight. I'm super excited that all of you were on here.